Eastman, that night when you left that dinner party at the house at Brides Lake to meet Alice Tripp in the bus station, do you remember leaving anything behind you? No, I don't. I don't remember leaving anything. I'm referring to your heart, Eastman. Did you leave that behind you? Did you, Eastman? Out there in that terrace in the moonlight? You left behind, didn't you, the girl you loved? And with her, your hopes, your ambitions, your dreams? Didn't you, Eastman? You left behind everything in the world you ever wanted, including the girl you loved? But you planned to return to it, didn't you, Eastman? Answer me. Yes. Eastman, when you told them all that night that you were going to visit your mother, you were lying, weren't you? Yes. When you gave the boatkeeper a false name, you were lying again, weren't you? Yes. When you drove up to Loon Lake, what reason did you give Alice Tripp for parking so far away from the lodge? Because we were out of gas. Weren't you lying again? Yes. Lies. Isn't it a fact that every move you made was built on lies? Yet now, of course, when you're facing death in the electric chair, suddenly you can't tell anything but the truth. Is that what you want the jury to believe? All the same, it's true. I didn't kill her. So you persist in lying about that, too. But we'll see. Now, Eastman, I want you to step down here into the boat and show the jury exactly, if you can, what happened when the boat overturned. Take the same position you had at the time of the drowning. Now, Eastman, when the girl rose in the boat to come towards you, did she stumble about there? Speak up. Yes. And then? Well, then she fell sideways into the water. So did I. And then what happened? And the boat turned over on top of us. What happened then? I couldn't see very clearly. There was a thud as if the edge of the boat came down and hit her on the head. Very likely. Now, after this accidental blow and you were both in the water, how far apart were you when you came up? No, exactly. Oh, you don't know. If you were trying to grab her, you couldn't have been more than a yard apart when you came up, could you? It was farther than that. Well, how far exactly? As far as from there to the jury box or halfway or what? About as far as from here to the jury box, I guess. Not really. You fell into the water together and when you and she come up, you're nearly 20 feet apart. That's how I remember it. Why couldn't you swim toward her instead of away from her? I don't know. Step over here. Or was the boat as far as from here to the bailiff? I guess so, I don't know. Do you mean to tell me you couldn't swim this little distance to this poor, weak girl and buoy her up till you could reach this boat just 15 feet away? Oh, I'll tell you one thing, you know, you know you're lying. She was drowning and you just let her you're drown. Right, she was sitting there defenseless in the back of the boat and you picked up this oar like this and you crashed it down on that poor girl's head like... Ah! I pushed that poor girl into the lake. You watched her drown. Isn't that the truth? No. That's all, Your Honor. By the premature adoption of an extreme belief and creed, it is well to understand this in looking toward the responsibilities of adult life, in particular the married state. When the student will emerge from the sheltered life into a world of grown-up problems for the first time, it is only then that he or she will view the enthusiasms of youth in the perspective of genuine problems, as opposed to the imagined problems which are the frequent products of the sheltered immaturity. It is at this time that the sometimes hastily adopted beliefs of youth are found to be insufficient.
Has the jury reached a verdict? We... <coughs> we have, Your Honor. Defendant will rise. We, the jury, find a defendant, George Eastman, guilty of murder in the first degree. the governor? It's no use. The governor couldn't be moved. Your mother's done everything a mother could do, George. That I know. Death is a little thing, George. You mustn't be afraid of it. You must fear now only for your immortal soul. If that sin is on your soul, my son, you must make your peace with God. I don't believe I'm guilty of all this. But I don't know. I wish I knew. If you are guilty, and I too am guilty, I must cheer your guilt. Oh, Mama, don't blame yourself. You know, they say only God and ourselves know what our sins and sorrows are. Perhaps in this case only God knows. George, Perhaps you've hidden the full truth of this even from yourself. I don't want to hide anything. I want to know. George, there's one thing you've never told anyone. Even yourself. There's one point in your story that holds the answer you're looking for. Yes. When you were on the lake with that poor girl and the... the boat capsized, and there was a moment when you might have saved her. I wanted to save her. But I just couldn't. But whom were you thinking of? Who were you thinking of just at that moment? Were you thinking of Alice? Were you thinking of the other girl? murdered George. I bless you, my boy. God forgive me if I failed you. about you, George. All the time. I went away to school to learn. I don't think I learned very much. I love you. 
George. I wanted you to know that. 